Sorry. Should I get on the iPad? Hello. Hello. Hi. I'm Bennett Wallander. I'm Tyler Welch. I'm Austin Rinsmeyer. And we are going to teach you today how to start a song in Garage Band. Yes. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Alright, first thing you want to do when making a song is, well, first you want to get an iPad. Yes, like, like that one there. Now, with that iPad, you will turn it on, and, wow, Walk Show North, iPad number 9. That's the iPad you use. Then you open, uh, sl unlock it, and you find the productivity folder thing in the iPad. <gasps> yes! There it is. Now, go to GarageBand, and it is now open. Now, see that plus in the left -hand, upper left-hand corner right there? Yeah, that's the one. Click that. New song. Here we go. All right. Now that you have our inside garage band, what you're going to do is you want to find the different parts of a song. Now, a song includes many different parts. One could be a keyboard, like that, or drums, like that. You also might want strings or a bass part, whichever you prefer, <laughs> like that. And then you can't forget the live recording, which you can use through a sampler. Right there. Isn't that neat? Let's get started. How about that keyboard right there? Let's dive right in. See, there's many things you can do with the keyboard. As you can see, there's all the different types of keys, all the notes you can play, and you can even change it to different sounding keyboards. What? Ooh, isn't that jazzy? It's like a baseball game. Indeed. <laughs> And now you have autoplay. With autoplay, you can just press a button, oh. one of the keys, and it'll and play at a certain amount of times by itself. You hear that little beat thing going on in the background? That's called a metronome. It keeps you, keeps you in tempo. Wow, that sounds swell. Now let's throw in a bass part. The bass is very similar to the keys with different notes you can use. But for this, we're going to choose to use autoplay again. Good choice. Wow, the song's coming together already. Notice the use of different chords. Very good. Now you shouldn't always just use autoplay like we did with the keyboard and the bass part. Sometimes you should add your own flavor and spice and creativity, like we will right here with our drums. Notice how we can change from different drum to drum. And it's easy as that. You just touch the beats in the places the sounds you want to hear, and they'll play almost magically. Ah! What a jam. Sometimes you need to edit your recording so it fits your song better. To do this, click the bars that you can see in sort of the top left region. Good choice. So, you can see right there that we have our drum part, which it doesn't play for the whole song. If you want to edit that, you can click it, and move it to the beginning of your song. And if you want to extend it, you can choose to make it longer, or you may even want to choose to loop it, which you can do by clicking it and clicking loop. And look at that, it'll play for the whole song. Good work, student. Now sometimes, you're going to want to use a live audio recording in your piece. Oh, look at that microphone. Maybe we can use that. Hey, we can! Ready? We're going to go and record our own live musical part to this song.
Now, here's what you have for our final product. You have keys, you have bass, drums, and a live recording. Now these are just the bare minimums that you need to make a song in GarageBand, but you can have a lot more fun exploring on your own. And when you explore, you can make great things and discover new things that never knew existed. So from us to you, bye! bye.